Hello, and welcome to the GBC Productions YouTube channel. This is episode 10. In this video, I will be fixing the tachometer in my 1987 Oldsmobile Cutlass Cruiser. So here's what's going on. I'm going to start the car, and you'll see the tach is reading a little bit high. Yeah, the engine is not running that fast. I have another tachometer hooked up sitting on the windshield, I'll show you. And that's reading a little under 2,000 RPMs, and that's about right. And then when I do the same thing on this one, it's not supposed to do that. So I'm going to take the cluster out and take it apart. All right, so here I have the cluster out, and I just need to uh, start taking it apart. I'll start by taking the lens off. I just have to remove these four screws. On occasion, you'll see the speedometer move if I move the cluster, and that's because this is a mechanical speedometer. Unlike in more modern cars, which use a electronic speedometer. All right, now we have access to the gauges. Now I have to take off the uh, gear shift indicator. And there's a couple screws down here, and off it comes. All right, so here's the gear shift indicator. How this works is it has a column gear shift and they actually have a little cable on this that will clip onto the collar of the gear shift lever. And as that rotates around, it'll pull the cable and move the little pointer across to the right position. And then there's a little spring on the back to bring it back. Very simple design, but it's been working for years. On the back of the cluster here, I have the three electrical connectors. This is the vehicle speed sensor. I don't have to move that out of the way. It's not in my way. I just have to take off these three speed nuts. And these two screws hold the back plate of the tachometer. Now, if I did everything right and I have everything undone, it should slide right out. And there we go. There it is. Now, I have to take this back plate off then I can take the gauge off. Now I'll just set this aside and move all these screws out of the way. All right, so now with the tachometer out, I'm gonna start taking it apart. All right, here's the back of the circuit board, and there are three nuts here that hold the gauge assembly to the circuit board. 
Now I have to see if I have the right socket. Not that one. Not that one either. Or that one. I'm going to go find the right tool. So I found the right tool. I'm going to take these off. These are the only three that I have to take off. And the gauge is off and I'll set it aside. And here's the circuit board. So let me explain what's happening here. Um, I'm going to get a uh, pen and some paper and draw this out a little bit. Alright, this right here is the calibration resistor. It is set at the factory with a laser. And the theory that I've been hearing is what's happening because of that, it's allowing moisture to get into that resistor and cause it to corrode, which will cause the value to go up or go open circuit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this resistor out of the circuit and put in my own variable resistor. I'm going to put in this 15 turn 500K potentiometer. So I'm going to go solder some wires onto this and get it ready to go in. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to draw a circuit here of how a variable resistor is typically wired into a circuit. In this case, it's gonna be a simple adjustable voltage divider. So we have B plus, which in this case is gonna be 12 volts. So we go to a resistor from the B plus. Then we go to another resistor and then we go to ground. So this is just a simple voltage divider. Now if these are both the same value, it'll be exactly half the voltage. In this case, it'll be six volts. In order to change the voltage, you could change either resistor or both of them. And if it was something you wanted to change constantly, you'd put in a variable resistor to either the top or the bottom. It doesn't make any difference. So I'll take the center lead and I'll hook it to the positive if I'm doing this on the upper resistor in this case. Now I don't need to hook it up this way in this circuit. In this circuit I'm only going to use the sweeper lead and then one leg of the resistor. So you have your typical resistor like this and then you have the sweeper, which is the arrow. We're only going to use one leg here and the sweeper. And that's how I have this one wired. And this is a 500 kilo ohm multi-turn potentiometer. And all I need to do is hook this in in place of that other resistor and take this up to the car and adjust it as close as I can get to what the other tachometer reads. Now the original resistor is supposed to be 257 kilo ohms. Now I'm going to go cut that calibration resistor out of the circuit and measure it. Okay, I've cut it out of the circuit and I measured it. Now, like I stated before, the original resistor is supposed to be 257K, and it tested at 438K. 
Now that's way off. Now I don't know if you can see this, but here's how I cut it out. I cut the trace on the circuit board right here. Now it may look like I'm going to the wrong pin, but if you actually follow the traces on the back of the circuit board, it does go through. That particular pin on this package is not hooked up to anything. They're just using that to route the wire. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to epoxy this to the board right here. Then I'm going to solder these two wires here and here across this capacitor. And then I go calibrate it. All right, so here it is. The epoxy is cured and the potentiometer is right here. And then I soldered the leads already in place and trimmed them up. And again, following the traces on the board, going right across this capacitor is in exactly the same place where this resistor was hooked up. That calibration resistor is no longer in the circuit. I have my own in there now. Now I just have to figure out how to put this back together. And then I'll test it. So now, the next step is I'm just going to put the gauge back on. Now the reason that the needle is pointing in every which direction right now is because this is known as an air core gauge. There's no spring to bring it back. It's brought back electronically. And what will happen is it's known as floating. But once power is applied to it, it'll go to zero until the engine is started and it's getting a signal. So we'll put these three nuts back on and that will hook this up to the board. Now, the chip that is on that board, not that resistor package, but there's also a chip on there, is a driver chip for the gauge itself. From what I have heard, it is an LM1819. I will put a link to the data sheet in the description for that. I believe what it is is they use that same chip and then they put their own markings on it. GM put their own part number on it. So now I'll just put this back piece back on. I'll just tighten these down. These don't have to be super tight. All right, so there's a gauge reassembled. Let me slide it on in here. Now, because I have to calibrate it, I'm gonna have to pull these two gauges out here. Now, they come out as an assembly. But before I do that, I'm gonna put these two screws in and secure the tachometer in place. All right, so now I'm going to pull a gauge out. I just have to pull two screws out here. And then the gauge just pulls right out. That's it. I'll take these two little reflectors off. And now I have access to the potentiometer. My hand's kind of in the way there, but it's there. Now I'm going to take this back up to the car and test it out. Now here it is back in the car. 
and I'm just going to start it up. I've got to kind of hold the gauge set back in order for it to read. It's a lot better than it was before. Comparing it to the other gauge, I'm within about 300 RPMs. Now I'm going to adjust this, but I've got to do it off camera because I can't hold everything all at once. Alright, so now here it is all adjusted. I am spot on. Alright, so now I'm going to take this back down and uh, put it all back together. So now I just have to put this gauge pair back in. It's the fuel gauge and voltage. So now the gauge is just plug right in. And put these two screws in. And now I'll put the gear shift indicator back in. Now just put the bezel on, and then the lens. And then put these four screws in that hold this together. So just to kind of recap on what I did here, I pulled the tachometer out, I tested the calibration resistor, determined it was out of specs, I removed that from the circuit, put in my own uh, uh, variable resistor, in this case a 15 turn potentiometer, soldered that in, adjusted it to the proper specs, and put everything back together. And now I have a working tachometer. So I'm not going to show reinstallation into the car because I have other things that I have to do on the car, so I can't put this in quite yet. Don't forget to subscribe for more, mash that like button, and comment below. Until next time, this is Uncle D from GBC Productions, signing off.